This is the uh, uh, breast elastography one study, um, which I'll, I'll be explaining to you. And um, its uh, purpose was to, to determine the reproducibility and the value of shear wave elastography. And I expect you're happy with the uh, acrostic SWE for shear wave elastography. Um, and the value of it was to see if, when it was added to the B, B mode grayscale BIRADS um, uh, uh, scoring, whether it added value. And I want to stress that point because um, many studies looking at elastography have, have, of course, worked in the breast area, but they've tried to compare elastography with B mode as though they were in competition with each other. And that's not really the way we work in clinical practice. So in this study, um, we've deliberately set out to fuse the two and see if there's added value um, for, uh, for, for combining um, SWE with, with B mode. Um, so <clears throat> we particularly wanted to look at the two groups of patients where there was a possibility of reclassifying the threes and the four A's um, with a view to changing uh, clinical management. So you'll see that much of what I'll be explaining to you uh, uh, concentrates on that aspect. So this was a large multicenter study, um, <clears throat> and it was pros prospective. Um, and um, we essentially focused on breast masses which were scheduled for biopsy um, or surgery, but usually for biopsy first, except in the case of cysts, of which we included just a few uh, where aspiration was, was accepted. Um, and for a few, uh, well, quite, quite a number of BIRADS2 cases, which were considered benign based on the imaging findings alone. Um, for the, <clears throat> the uh, BIRADS3 cases, we either had a, a biopsy, some centers do, or we had a prolonged and intensive follow-up. Um, we had a, 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 an important per person in the team was a statistician, um, and uh, oops, and uh, <clears throat> sorry about that. And she uh, assessed that a thousand cases would be sufficient, would have sufficient stati statistical power um, to uh, drive the study. Actually, and I'll come back to this right at the end. We've recruited many more than a thousand. It's more like eighteen hundred. And uh, right from the start, we had the concept of having a, a trial set on which we developed the criteria for adding SWE into B mode, and then we would test those prospectively on, on another set of patients, and that, that will happen on the uh, uh, remaining 800 patients. Um, so I really said that, focusing on the threes and the uh, uh, and four, BIRAD three and four lesions. So what we actually did in the study um, was to take uh, uh, B-mode images in two planes using the array that um, is on the uh, Explorer, um, <clears throat> and we assessed th those for the BIRADS features. And I should state that because this was an experimental study, of course, we didn't base the patient management in any way um, on, the, uh, on the SWE features. They were all based in a conventional fashion um, on the B-mode features. We also took three consecutive shear wave um, images, um, and this was done so that we could perform a, 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 a consistency study, and I'll show you the results of those. Then <clears throat> using um, the system for measurement of the, uh, of the uh, stiffness values in kilopascals, which is on the system, um, we put ROIs, a little two millimeter squared box, on the stiffest part of each lesion. Um, and it's quite important to note that we picked that by eye, looking at the, at the color bar, which I'll show you an example of in a minute. Um, and um, <clears throat> uh, the, so the, the values are the peak values available for that particular lesion. And interestingly, they very often lay outside the visible B-mode lesion, uh, particularly for malignancies. And that's something that we sort of expected from compression elastography, um, that the stiffness can be uh, 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 wider. We also looked at the fat at the same depth, or as near as we could get to the same depth, um, and I mentioned that we did quantification. I should just state that measuring these KPA values is not approved, perhaps I should hopefully say not yet, approved by the FDA. This is the flow chart of the recruited patients. We recruited 1,000 lesions, but we decided that double lesions in a patient might bias the results, so we excluded those patients and a number of other reasons why patients were excluded listed on the right, and they came to nine, uh, three nine lesions, in, in the end of which um, uh, just short of one-third were malignant, so quite a, uh, an average distribution in this kind of set of patients. Um, and they distributed more or less as we'd expect um, between the BIRADS, with a slight exception here that 
The buy routes threes were just over 2%, 2.6%, which is perhaps a little bit high, and uh, there are interesting speculations as to why that might be. But they're not wildly different from what we'd expect. And then the distribution in the breakdown of buy routes four was also um, a fairly, a fairly much pr uh, predictable. So I think fairly standard set of cases were available for study. And of the um, shareway features, there were essentially uh, uh, two families. One uh, 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 qualitative, so subjectively looking at the image and looking at, for example, the shape um, and the homogeneity or heterogeneity of the lesion and the similarity between the B-mode and the elastography. And the second were quantitative, um, and some of these were just measurements, uh, li linear or area measurements based on the shear wave compared to the uh, B-mode image, um, and others used the um, elast elasticity measurements on the ROI. And we'll be showing the, the results from both of those. Then we also added a blinded second read to the study, which Dr. Wendy Berg, who's here with us, um, performed. Um, it must have been a very arduous task. She went through all of these images um, which, uh, and completely blinded to the center that did them and the biopsy uh, or, or final diagnosis. And she scored them, uh, of course, for B-mode and then using shear wave um, by uh, using the color levels on the color scale that the system had. Um, and so she came up with a, a set of readings, and there's the color scale. Um, this was a benign lesion. You can see low values in the blue uh, uh, color area, um, <clears throat> and um, uh, uh, th that's a, a very typical result compared to the very typical result from a, uh, an invasive carcinoma, where we often get this um, ring of stiffness, a sort of ring or horseshoe pattern around the uh, stiff margins of the lesion, and it's much, much larger than the lesion on, on the B-mode. Um, <clears throat> and that shows, the, again, the color scale with a fixed um, upper limit to it. Hmm. I think I've got to sing at this point. <laughs> I'll, probably, I'll probably not burden you with that. <laughs> um, this one I just put in to show that the readings come up in a scale on the side there, so you can read off the values of the box within the lesion or the stiffest part of it and the next one in the fat um, in the adjacent uh, tissue. So the first um, thing we wanted to look at was the reproducibility. Um, and we looked at the, at the reproducibility both for the qualitative and the quantitative scores. Um, <clears throat> and then um, this, is, and this is how we measured the, the size of the lesion, just to show you that in the case where there was no increased stiffness, we traced around the outline of the B-mode the, on the underlying part of the, of the display. Um, and then we worked on a model to try and figure out the most uh, valuable, the most discriminating uh, uh, combination of the B-mode and the shear wave by adding, um, adding these features in and looking at the area under the ROC curves. So we had a, a set for large numbers of all of those features in combinations, um, and we uh, identified the optimum threshold because you can, of course, set the cutoff point for where you want, um, and, um, and, and, and that formed the, that was the, the philosophy behind uh, picking the values that would be best. And similarly, with the, uh, with the blinded read that Wendy did, we looked at the uh, color thresholds from that uh, uh, blinded second read. And then we applied that to the test cases where we thought that it was likely that um, SWE might make a difference, in other words, the three and four lesions, and the idea was to upgrade three lesions if the elastic, elasticity features were suspicious. Um, and we call that uh, 4A prime because it's not really an established uh, scale yet. So, and vice versa, if, they, if the elasto features were not suspicious, we downgraded it to a, a, four, to a, a 4A to a 3. And we didn't want to have too many malignancies, of course, in the 3A in the three prime uh, uh, group. So we, we targeted a threshold of not more than 2%. And at the same time, we didn't want to worsen the positive predictive value. So that was the kind of philosophy underlying it. Um, and I'm going to show you the results now, first of the, uh, of the um, a qualitative um, uh, interoperator interoper reproducibility on those 939. So this is the whole data set now. And you see that the ma vast majority had images that were very similar to each other. And in fact, if you take this and the yellows, um, it's 87% uh, almost that were uh, a very similar, indicating a very high reproducibility. 
Um, and this, this um, <coughs> uh, spider web shows the arrangement or the results for the quantitative, those numbers that we measured, um, same, same uh, 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 scale, and they all, except the E minimum, minimum elasticity value, were above 0.8, one being a perfect value. Um, and on the Landis and Cox scale, that means almost perfect agreement. So we think that this study, the results here seem to indicate that this is an extremely reliable technique um, uh, and, and, and uh, by implication, easy for the user to perform as well. Now, for the main trial itself, um, <clears throat> we looked at um, a, 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 a number of these features, and here are the areas under the curve, and this is a, 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 a goodness of fit uh, measurement, a Bayesian goodness of fit measurement. So you want to get these as high as you can, obviously, and these you want to get as low as you can, because it means the best goodness of fit. And you see that the uh, BIRADS on the B mode alone was um, 86 odd percent, and every one of these added features improved the um, area under the curve. So none of them made it worse. Um, I've highlighted the ones that gave the best improvement, and actually this one, adding the color, was the best, best of them all. Um, and that was uh, done <clears throat> by um, choosing a, a, a color that um, was, was green or below for benign and yellow and above for, for malignant. Um, and I've essentially said this, so I'll skip that slide. Um, and um, here is the, that, that uh, uh, rule that we extracted applied to just the threes and the fours uh, now. Um, and um, there's, that column shows the malignancy rate. I've highlighted the ones that went above that cho chosen threshold of 2% th of of two, uh, two for the three, uh, uh, three primes. And these are the specificities and the sensitivities. And you see that they're all good. They've all improved, just as the, the model suggested. But the one that came out best was the color green, as I described. Um, and this um, ROC curve shows those added, added uh, together. Just again, remind you, for the threes and the four primes. So these are the reclassified ones. Um, and um, it's a little bit muddly here, so um, <clears throat> I've drawn it larger. And you can see here that they, as compared to the birads, which is the white line, they all improved the, the curve, pushing it up to that magic left top left corner. And the best two are the color green and the homogeneity of the lesions. So those two seem to be the best. Um, the, the very best, and it's not by much of a margin, is the green. Um, <clears throat> and um, that changed the area under the curve from 86.3 to 88.8 percent. It kept the 2% malignancy rate in the three primes, and it pushed the specificity from B mode, B mode of 54.5 up to 75.8. And I think that's an, a, a really rather startling improvement, a really great improvement in the, in the specificity, um, and no deterioration in the already very good sensitivity. So the, the, the bottom line here is that the adding several of these features, but in particular, um, the best one, the green, really improved the uh, specificity uh, while not damaging the sensitivity. A very strong result indeed. So in summary, interoperator agreement is excellent, indicating it's a stable, reliable uh, approach to doing elastography. And the preliminary analysis, the um, BIRADS plus E color was the best, with a very good improvement in the area under the curve, um, and translating it into an, a, a good increase in sensitivity, increasing accuracy, and not damaging uh, uh, specificity. So what next? Well, we've still got that 800-odd cases to um, uh, apply this in a prospective fashion to, and that's what we propose to do. It's actually underway and it's nearly complete. We want to look at other combinations, maybe adding two, maybe adding more features. It may help, although our preliminary look at that suggests that it won't make any difference. Um, and then, this is the difficult bit, of course, we would like to see this introduced into clinical practice, but clearly you need to do effectively sort of post-marketing surveillance and check that it really is working. And I'd like to thank Supersonic very much, not just for their financial <clears throat> and um, intellectual support, but their uh, uh, continued enthusiasm for this project. Um, and of course, I'm greatly indebted to all of the BE1 investigators.